hand feeding has always been costly for the man who buys feed to keep his sheep alive in drought time. This is as true now as it was in the drought of 1902. The cost, however, can be reduced and reduced substantially if the man on the land knows the amount of real nourishment there is in different foodstuffs so that he can buy the best available ration at the lowest possible cost. Scientists working in laboratories all over the world, as well as in Australia, have measured the exact amount of nourishment contained in a wide variety of foodstuffs. The knowledge they have gained, however, does not always reach the man who needs it most, the man who is hand-feeding sheep. The nourishment in fodders is made up of proteins, minerals, vitamins and most important of all in drought feeding, the fuel that supplies the energy needed to keep an animal alive. The important thing in drought time is to see that sheep get the essential minimum of this fuel. Just as petrol provides the fuel that keeps this truck going, so food provides the fuel that keeps these sheep alive. Specially constructed cages are used to determine the amount of fuel each foodstuff. As a result of such tests, all foodstuffs can be compared on a common basis of the number of fuel units each contains. The food given to sheep falls into four separate groups. First come the roughages that include chaff, usually oaten or wheaten, hay such as cereal, lucerne or grass, silage of many different kinds and straw. Next there are the concentrates, such as maize, wheat, barley, grain sorghum, and oats. The commercial byproducts include linseed meal, coconut meal, meat meal and molasses. Lastly, there are the watery foodstuffs, such as potatoes and swedes. Consider the roughages first. Take 100 pounds each of chaff, hay, silage and straw. The number of fuel units amounts to 40 in the chaff, 35 in the hay, 16 in the silage and 12 in the straw. The concentrates at a cross have higher values. 100 pounds each of maize, wheat, barley and grain sorghum all have about 77 fuel units and oats have about 60. The lower value of oats is of course due to the husk. 100 pounds each of the oil meals, meat meal and molasses, contain approximately 77, 70 and 52 fuel units. The large amount of water in vegetables gives them the last values of all. Potatoes have 18 fuel units in every 100 pounds and Swedes have 8. It is not necessary to memorize all these differences in fuel values it is sufficient to remember that such differences do exist. If we compare wheat with hay and potatoes, we find that it has twice the fuel value of hay and four times the fuel value of potatoes. The practical example will show the importance of these differences. How many sheep, for instance, will 10 pounds each of potatoes, hay and wheat feed if each sheep is to get a ration of equal fuel value? On a ration of two pounds of potatoes per head, the ten pounds will feed five sheep. On a ration of one pound of hay per head, which is equal to two pounds of potatoes in fuel value, the ten pounds of hay will feed ten sheep. On a ration of one half pound of wheat per head, which is equal in fuel value to the hay or potato rations, 
10 pounds of wheat will feed 20 sheep. It'll be obvious that although the amount of nourishment or fuel is the same in each ration, the 10 pounds of wheat feeds twice as many sheep as the 10 pounds of hay, and four times as many as the 10 pounds of potatoes. Such a comparison also shows the importance of fuel values in relation to the weight and bulk of foodstuffs. This bag of wheat weighs 130 pounds and contains 100 fuel units. The chaff also contains 100 fuel units, but it weighs 250 pounds. The potatoes weigh even more, 550 pounds, and these also contain 100 fuel units. Therefore, while the fuel value is the same in each case, the differences in weight and bulk are considerable. If potatoes, chaff and wheat each cost seven pounds per tonne, the 550 pounds of potatoes containing 100 fuel units would cost 400 pence. The 250 pounds of chaff containing 100 fuel units would cost 190 pence, less than half the cost of the potatoes. While 130 pounds of wheat containing 100 fuel units would cost 100 pence, half the cost of the chaff and a quarter the cost of the potatoes. This knowledge of the amount of nourishment different foodstuffs contain is the basis on which this calculator has been worked out. By its use, the man who buys feed in drought time can select a foodstuff which gives him the maximum amount of nourishment at the minimum cost. He simply turns the dial to place each foodstuff he can purchase opposite its price per ton, and the last figure here is the cheapest buying. For example, if maize is quoted at 10 pounds per ton, wheat at 7 pounds 10, and oats at 7 pounds, which would be the best buying? Maize at 10 pounds gives a figure of 139. Wheat at 7 pounds 10 gives a figure of 105. And oats at 7 pounds gives a figure of 126. Wheat shows the lowest figure and is accordingly the best buying. Purchasing wheat instead of maize at the prices quoted will mean a saving of 25 pounds on every 10 ton lot, which is 25% cheaper. During droughts, therefore, when prices of foodstuffs fluctuate, sometimes violently, the only firm ground the man feeding his sheep can stand on is knowledge of which foodstuff provides the greatest amount of nourishment or fuel at the lowest possible cost. The calculator you've already seen gives us information at a glance. Having decided what foodstuff to buy, the next question is how much to feed. This calorimeter measures the minimum amount of fuel a sheep needs to keep it alive. In the next room, readings are taken from which these fuel requirements can be worked out. Feeding experiments help to confirm these calculations. In such experiments, the sheep are kept in small yards. Accordingly, they don't have to walk long distances to food and water, as is often the case under practical conditions. They are weighed each month, so that an accurate record is obtained of any gain or loss in weight on the particular ration being tested. It has been found that sheep can lose almost 50% of their normal weight over a year and still survive. The ration is carefully weighed out every day for each group of sheep. This guarantees that there is no variation in the amount they are fed. The Council for Scientific and Industrial Research has proved by similar experiments that sheep which are entirely hand-fed do just as well when given their ration once a week as they do when fed daily, as is the case here. This finding may prove to be of the very greatest importance in reducing costs of labour in drought time. The results of all such experiments are only a guide to feeding sheep under paddock conditions, where there are often additional pickings, such as burr, leaves and roots. They are nevertheless a valuable indication of how sheep will do on certain quantities of feed. A ration commonly fed under severe drought conditions in Australia is one half pound of hay and four ounces of maize per sheep per day. On this ration, 
There is a heavy loss of weight over a period of almost 12 months under the extreme conditions you've just seen. An extra half pound of hay or an extra four ounces of maize means a very small loss in comparison. But the larger ration sometimes costs the man who has to buy the feed more money than he can afford. No hard and fast rule can be laid down as to what quantity of food should be given to sheep in drought time. The value of the sheep, their condition, the amount of dry feed in the paddocks and the owner's financial position will all affect his decision. But what can be estimated accurately is just how much of one foodstuff corresponds to a given quantity of another in fuel value. This is important when a change is made from one foodstuff to another. For example, many drought rations contain wheat or maize. If four ounces per sheep per day were given, it is a simple matter to work out the quantities needed for a thousand sheep per month and also what the corresponding quantities of other foodstuffs would be. The thousand sheep would need three and a quarter tons of maize, wheat, barley, grain sorghum or oil meals every four weeks, or four tons of oats, or six and a half of chaff, or seven and a half of hay, fifteen tons of potatoes, sixteen of silage, or thirty-two of swedes are the equivalent quantities of these fodders. A good deal can therefore be done towards saving money in drought time if the amount of nourishment in different foodstuffs is known. This has not always been the case in the past, as the very severe drought in 1945 showed. A minimum ration of maize fed in one district of New South Wales, where it was landed at 18 pounds per tonne, cost 111 pounds per thousand sheep per month under conditions of complete hand feeding. Chaff at a landed cost of 12 pounds per tonne might have seemed cheaper. Actually, it was 32 pounds per thousand dearer. Potatoes at 8 pounds 5 per tonne cost 212 pounds per thousand, nearly double the cost of the maize. But wheat at 9 pounds per tonne cost only 60 pounds per thousand. Wheat may not always be the cheapest buying, but whatever the foodstuff chosen, it is the actual amount of nourishment in each, measured in fuel units, that provides the only safe standard of comparison. It gives the man on the land accurate knowledge of which foodstuff is actually cheapest. It is a new and effective weapon with which to fight drought.